Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, what an exciting show. Um, we, uh, I was just thrilled to hear all the discussion, all the comments about OpenBMC. Uh, my name is Richard McQuaid. This is my colleague, Charles Kearney. Uh, we're both with HPE. I run the uh, Open, OpenBMC Program Management Office for HPE. I've been working, working with the team of developers and marketing to get us to we, where we are today to fully support OpenBMC on HPE ProLiant Gen 11 servers. So I was just thrilled. I was really excited at the level of discussion that was going on at, uh, t at this week's event. Um, that being said, okay, different keyboard. Okay. Um, that being said, I'll go into a quick overview of, uh, of what our uh, OpenBMC strategy is on HPE ProLiant Gen 11, and then I'll turn it over to Charles, who will go dig a little deeper into what those details are, um, how we set up the security, and how we bring that value to the customer, and then I'll pick back up and, and finish, it, finish it off. But uh, anyway, so uh, in, what, we, uh, what we call our strategy is OpenBMC enablement on HPE ProLiant. And basically what that means is the customer will, customer who is interested in putting their OpenBMC image on an HPE ProLiant server would buy a ProLiant server off the shelf, which would include ILO, HPE's BMC controller. It would get delivered to the customer, and then it's through ILO, a process co called uh, transfer of ownership, that we actually enable the uh, Gen 11 server. The, they come, they get shipped capable, but HPE, after we speak with our customer, we, we go through some security signing on some files to make sure we close any possible um, vulnerability window. We do that because we, we can do that in Gen 11 because we have a secure, an, an extra secure device down on the PCA. And it's par through part of the, uh, it's through all the security signing that that we lock down that, uh, you know, any kind of vulnerability window. Um, <clears throat> as, far as, uh, as far as the scope of servers that uh, we support OpenBMC on, it's our Gen 11 DL300 series servers, it also the RL300. So, uh, so it has to be Gen 11, that's, that's the important thing, and it's our mainstream compute servers. Um, what is what is OpenBMC and ProLiant? Well, like I had been speaking, HPE enables the server, basically unlocks and opens the door for the customer to take their their developed, their maintained, their taste, their tested OpenBMC firmware, and to flash basically flash it over top of ILO, reboot the server, and then boot into their OpenBMC firmware environment. At that point, ILO is no longer on the server. And at that point, the customer now fully owns that software stack, and HPE steps out of the way. And we believe this is what brings the real value to the customer to be able to develop their OpenBMC image the way they want. HPE is not a man in the middle. We don't continue to have our fingers in the pie, so to speak. It is the customer totally owns, he has total ownership of that firmware. Um, and what it is not, of course, HPE does not develop, does not procure, does not publish an open BMC image. We, uh, we support the customer through our ILO transfer of ownership. We provide, we provide a path from ILO to open BMC and from open BMC back to ILO should they decide to redeploy that server in another role, in another, you know, another uh, purpose. So I, to us, that, that's another very good value point. It's very flexible management to go to and from um, when, when the customer desires. Scope of products, I already touched on, RL300, AMD servers, Intel servers. Um, we, we also, with our OpenBMC uh, enablement, we also have our uh, OSFCI to test tool implementation available free, anyone can just register. They can use that as an initial test and development platform or to kick the tire, so to speak, for on their OpenBMC image before deploying it on, on actual hardware that they like. We have, we actually have Gen 11 hardware hooked up to our OSFCI tool. 
Um, let's see. And then um, at this point, I'll turn it over to Charles, who's going to dive a little deeper into the details and security. All right, thank you. Uh, so I just would like to speak a little bit about what does OpenC, OpenBMC enablement mean as a developer within HPE? So what are we doing to enable that for our customers? Uh, so we are developing a kernel that will run on the uh, GXP ASIC, which is our uh, ILO uh, ASIC that is in the, the board management controller in the servers. So we are upstreaming that kernel to the, the mainstream uh, Torvalds uh, Linux. We're also developing U-Boot for that ASIC and upstreaming that. And then as well as the uh, OpenBMC machine layers that define the hardware for each of those uh, Gen 11 servers that we're targeting. Uh, so uh, coupled with, along with that OpenBMC uh, machine layer definition where there is a large uh, you know, set of code that is enabling the a ASIC specific functionality and the control of our servers, communication with the um, and the uh, host processor. Yeah. So one of the key points there is that we have a common ROM that we're targeting between ILO and OpenBMC for the, the host processor. Yeah. Yeah, so what is the ILO ASIC? That's a custom ASIC that HPE has developed, and that is what uh, we traditionally run our ILO firmware uh, software stack on, and through the transfer of ownership, we're enabling our customers to deploy OpenBMC to this ASIC, right? And so what does uh, secure boot look like for a customer that is deploying OpenBMC? So the fundamental aspect of security for the ILO ASIC is the same between our ILO firmware uh, software stack and an OpenBNC enabled system. So that begins with the silicon root of trust that is looking at the SHA-512 hash for our HPE boot block. And then that boot block, once it is uh, uh, inspected and is passing, that is enabling the processor in the system. And then that boot block is then taking out of the secure element the customer's public key, which is stored in the uh, machine through the transfer of ownership process. And then from that point on, the boot block is uh, confirming that the customer deployed image is matching the signing and that's in the, uh, the, the public key that's in the secure element. And like uh, Richard alluded to, that, that from that point on, the customer is now in the responsibility, you know, the path of responsibility for security and development of the OpenBMC image. Yeah, so we ha kind of have two key tools that's enabling transfer of ownership, and that's uh, modifications that we made to the ILO firmware to support that initial deployment of OpenBMC. And then we have a Python script that helps the customer navigate through the generation of keys, signing of the OpenBMC image, and transferring uh, that public key to HPE. So there's kind of eight uh, key steps, and I'll, I'll go through those here. So the Python script is uh, generating a digital certificate that is used to, uh, the ILO firmware, is it's using that certificate to authenticate with admin rights uh, within the, the, the server when it's running ILO firmware. Uh, the next step is that the customer is then generating a public and a private signing key that they use to sign their OpenBMC firmware. And then they uh, use what we call as our uh, transfer file, our secure transfer file. They're sending essentially that public key to HPE. And then we take the uh, public key and append our certificate to that and send that back to the customer. And we call that kind of our secure transfer file package. So with that secure transfer file package there, a customer is able to uh, create a USB key that will then be used to uh, do the actual transfer of ownership process where it is installing the, uh, the public signing key for the customer into the secure element, into the system. And from then that point, the customer can build OpenBMC images and make, uh, making sure they sign that with the correct uh, private signing key, and then they can do an additional kind of uh, appending of our certificate to the OpenBMC image for that initial transfer from ILO to OpenBMC. Uh, yeah, and then the, at that point, the, the, the uh, server is running OpenBMC, and further development and deployment of images is happening through the, the standard OpenBMC firmware update process. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks, Charles. Um, so at this point, uh, I like this. I like to show this slide because um, it accentuates that cyclical type um, process to go uh, to go from ILO to OpenBMC. Um, as Charles mentioned, part of the security, we we create a key, which is then um, registered with an ILO with a within the ILO six administrator account. It could be 
the default account or it could be a new account that you can assign it to. Then those files that, uh, you, that were created during that uh, file signing process, it's like three or four files go on the USB key. Then that USB key goes in the front of the server, ILO is still on the server, goes in the front of the server, 34 seconds, literally I timed it, 34 seconds later, um, transfer of ownership is enabled within ILO, and it's at that point that you can upload your OpenBMC firmware to ILO, flash it, reset the server, and you're in your OpenBMC um, environment. Um, whoops, a little heavy fingered there. Um, so uh, again, for me, OpenBMC, I run the OpenBMC um, PMO, just I'm totally psych you know, psyched about OpenBMC. I drink the OpenBMC Kool-Aid, so to speak. But we also, uh, on our Gen 11 servers, we have the OCP 3.0 slots, and uh, we're working in Gen 12 for DCSEM and also DC8 HMS, right? Um, <clears throat> again, I'm Richard McQuaid, my colleague here, Charles Kearney. Please uh, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or comments, or you know, catch us in the hall afterwards if you can. Be happy to to answer those. Um, there's a few uh, noteworthy um, hyperlinks. If you can grab a shot of those, I think the slides are registered with the, the, um, the summit folks here. Um, good information here, additional information, but again, you can always reach out to, uh, to myself. Anything else, Charles? Good. That's, um, that's about it. Um, I don't know if we have time for questions, actually. I think we're down Probably to and if anyone one has question. any questions. Thank you. Uh, I have one question. Um, what's the develop, like say I'm, I have a system in front of me and I've owned it, what's, what do I do when I want to send it to de-own it and uninstall my key? What, what was it going? Yeah. So if you want to go back from OpenBMC to ILO, is that essentially the question? Yeah, we, we uh, have a special ILO firmware image that we send to a customer who wants to go back from OpenBMC to ILO and they, they would just deploy that uh, Transfer, file, transfer image into the OpenBMC system. There's a process that we detail the, you know, the specifics of where they would uh, put that, um, that firmware image. And then th when you uh, deploy that transfer image and you reboot the system, you're now back in a uh, standard uh, ILO 6 firmware and all of the public keys are wiped from that system as well in, in, during that process. So. Cool, thank you. And I think that's time. Thank you everyone. Thank you all the speakers.